Hi there! Did you ever use the serial monitor with the Arduino IDE? Today we will explore how to interact with the Arduino board to turn on and off an LED using the serial monitor. But before getting into the details, remember that Team Trees is still working toward reaching the goal of planting 20 million trees by the end of the year. Please help us out and look at the video description below for details, where you also see how to contribute to the making of these videos. Let's begin! Once we start the Arduino IDE on the computer, we are presented with this window. Going from top to bottom, we can see a number of elements. First, we see the menu bar over here. This is full of the usual stuff present in the menu bar of all programs, and there is also much more. We will go to the most useful items of the menu at the time that we will use them first, which will make it easier to remember the various functionalities, especially those that are specific for this ID. Underneath the menu, we have the toolbar, which is a collection of icons to have handy all those functionalities that are used the most. So, the leftmost icon is used to verify and compile the program that we have prepared for the Arduino board. In the Arduino jargon, this program is called Sketch. Next follows an icon that is used to upload the compiled code to the Arduino board. After that, we have another icon that is used to open a new editor window, which we can use to start writing a new sketch. After that, there is the Open icon, which is used to open a previously saved sketch, and finally the Save icon to save the current sketch. One last icon is on the rightmost side, which is the one that is used to open the serial monitor. This actually works only if an Arduino board is connected to the computer and is recognized by the Arduino IDE. Below the toolbar, we have the editor window, this one, and this is the area where we actually write the sketches. And finally, at the very bottom, we see the message area. This is the place where error messages are displayed. This area will provide information about errors in the sketch or other kind of errors that can happen while we use the RDE. For example, see what happens if I try to start a serial monitor where there is no board connected to the PC. You can see that there is a message that says that there is no board connected to the computer. Let's now take a look at our first sketch that makes use of the serial monitor in the Arduino Uno embedded test LED. Before getting into the details of the sketch, you should know that all the Arduino sketches are actually written in C++, which is a very powerful object-oriented language. If you know already how to write code in C++, you'll find it very easy to write code for the Arduino platform. If not, the information I provide in this tutorial should be enough to get you started. Every Arduino sketch has two main functions that need to be defined the setup function and the loop function. The setup function is the one where you provide instructions that need to be executed only once at the beginning of the program execution. They can initialize variables or print some information on the signal monitor or define some element of the Arduino board to work in a specific way and so forth. The loop function, instead, is the core of the Arduino sketch, so it is the section that the Arduino board will execute over and over again without ever stopping. This is the place where we put all the actions that we want the Arduino to perform. Let's take a look at the specific sketch now. At the very first line, we see the definition of what is called a global variable. A global variable is one that can be seen from any function of the program. Because it needs to be visible from everywhere, it is put outside of a function. In this case, we are defining an integer variable named byte received. An integer variable is a container for an integer number. In this particular case, it will contain the ASCII code of the key that we will press on the keyboard of the computer to communicate with the Arduino board. The ASCII code is the one that allows computer to recognize letters and numbers computers, in fact, can only understand binary numbers. Everything else they need to handle has to be converted into binary form for the computer to understand it. The ASCII code is a code that associates each key on the computer keyboard with a sequence of 8 binary digits. Each key 
is represented by a different number in binary format. The variable byte received will store the binary code of the key that we push. After the variable definition, we have the setup function. You know who you are, so if you know C++, you know what the void setup expression means. For everybody else, you just need to know that you need to write the beginning of the setup function always this way. And that the body of the function needs to be put in between the curly brackets, like the ones you see on lines 4 and 14. Let's now take a look at the content of the function, which is called the body of the function. All those instructions at the beginning with serial, you see from lines 5, 6, 7 and so forth up to line 12, mean that we are telling the Arduino to do something that is related with a serial monitor. The instruction on line 5 in particular means that we want the Arduino board to communicate with a serial monitor using a speed of 9600 volt. If you don't know what that means, it's really not important right now, but just know that you need to specify a communication speed. We will see this number again later on, and we will see how to use it. All the instructions from line 6 to line 12 mean that the sentence between the double ticks, like this one, this one, and so forth, need to be printed on the same line on the serial monitor. Since on line 12 there is nothing between double ticks, it means that there has to be an empty line at that point. And finally the instruction on line 13 specifies that we are using a built-in LED, which by the way is attached to pin 13 of the Arduino board. The Arduino Uno board specifically. In particular the LED built-in is a constant that the IDE understands and interprets exactly as the number 13. So the instruction says that the pin 13 has to work as an output, which is in fact the built-in LED. All those lines that you see starting with a double slash, like this one, are simply comments. Those sentences are put in there to let us know what is going on, but the ID will not care about those lines. Similarly, this statement, like this one or this one, are also comment. They begin with the sequence slash star and end with the sequence star slash. And they can be put anywhere in the code, and the compiler, the IDE or the Arduino, won't care about those. Let's now go to the loop function. The loop function, here it is, checks on line 19 that the serial monitor is really available. If it is not available, the program goes to the end of the if section, which is the closing curly bracket here on line 43. So, if the serial monitor is not available, the program will do nothing, because the loop will basically jump from line 20 to line 43. But, if the serial monitor is available, then we go inside the curly brackets, and we continue the execution from line 21. On this line, we see the variable byte received, and basically this variable is filled with the content of what is read on the serial monitor, that is, the key that is pressed on the keyboard. The Arduino will know when the information is available once we hit the enter key on the keyboard itself. At that point, the Arduino will start printing all on the same line, all the information required by lines 22 through line 26. So, line 22, the actual symbol that was pushed on the keyboard will be printed, but in the decimal format, corresponding to the ASCII code for that key. Then the, we will see that some spaces will be printed on the same line, and then, as we can see on line 24, byte received is printed again, but this time in hexadecimal format. Then there are some more spaces, and then again the same information, byte received, but this time will be printed in the character format, or basically in other words, the symbol itself. Once that is done, the program moves to line 28, where we check if the input symbol, bytes received, is the number 1. If not, we skip all this section and we go to line 34. But if it is yes, then we execute line 30, which basically writes on the pin 13 a high voltage, which basically means that the LED will be turned on. And in addition to that, we print the information LED on on the serial monitor. After that, we move regardless on line 34 and we check if the input character was a zero. If not, we skip this part, otherwise we go inside of it and we basically turn off the LED and then we print on the serial monitor the words LED off. 
once all of this is done, we go to the line 40, where we use the function print ln, which means print line, to complete the line and terminate it. It's basically equivalent of a carriage return. At that point, the loop function is completed and all the work is done. This does not mean that the Arduino is done, but simply that this run of the loop is completed. Then the loop will be called again, again and again, basically forever. To use this sketch, we now need to verify and compile it, so we need to click on the first icon in the toolbar. However, before doing that, we need to make sure that we have selected the right Arduino board and the right speed of the serial monitor. To do so, we need to go to the menu, Tools, and then boards and make sure that the correct Arduino board is selected in my case it's going to be the Arduino Uno then we connect actually the Arduino Uno board to the computer and once that is done using a USB cable we verify that the ID has recognized the Arduino so we go again to tools this time to port and we have to make sure that there is a port that is selected and is labeled with the type of Arduino that we have selected previously. Finally, we open the serial monitor, clicking on the serial monitor icon, and we check that the speed used by the serial monitor corresponds to the one that we put in the program. In this case, 9600 volt. You can see, we can check here. As you can see, there are several kinds of speeds that we can use. The one we have selected is 9600, because that's the one that we have put in the sketch. So let's close this for now, and let's see how to run the program. So now that the setup is completed, we can verify and compile the code by clicking on the verify icon. So let's do that. Once the ID has verified the code is written correctly and has been compiled, this message will appear in the message area, providing information about the size of the program in the Arduino board memory. You see, 434 bytes. So now we can upload the code and start executing it. So what we need to do is to click on the Upload icon. You see, things are happening over here. Everything is done. The ID thanks us. See if we take a look here, maybe we can see everything that happens. So this is basically the representation of the process of uploading all the information to the Arduino board. If you see all this happening, and then at the end uh, this part, thank you then it means that the Arduino was loaded correctly. In addition to that, now that the code has been uploaded to the Arduino, the Arduino starts executing it right away. So, let's reopen the serial monitor window. Look, the code is already running, and now you see all the information that were printed at the very beginning in the setup function. Now we can type any symbol on the keyboard, for example A1, and uh, enter. You see, the symbol 1 corresponds to the decimal 49, which is in 31 in hexadecimal, and this is the symbol 1, and the LED was turned on, as you can see on the Arduino board. Now, let's put a 0. And here, the 0 has a hexadecimal representation of 30, and the decimal representation of 48 and the LED was turned off, as you can see on the board. If we type any other symbol, let's say um, G for example, you see, we have this information printed here, but nothing happens on the LED, which is still off right now. We can uh, even write uh, several symbols at once, like this. As long as there is a 1 or a 0 in all this sequence of symbols, at the end, when we hit enter, you see the, the one and only the one has been interpreted, in this case, as an LED on again. And now the LED actually on the Arduino board is actually lighted up. 
we can do the same again this time we put a zero in between and look at that now there is a zero in between the sequence and the LED has been turned off now look what happens if I put a sequence of zero ones one after another a long sequence like this see how the Arduino responds to that take a look at the LED on the board you see? The LED started flashing according to what was happening over here. So every time a 1 was recognized, the LED was turned on. Every time a 0 was recognized, the LED was turned off. And so over and over and over and over, until all the sequence in the string that we put over there is completed. Cool, isn't it? Today we have seen how to interact with the program running on the Arduino through the monitor and the keyboard of a computer. This, however, is not the only way to interact with the Arduino board through the serial monitor. In fact, another way to use the serial monitor is for debugging the code that we write that does not work as expected. Next video will center on this topic. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give a thumb up to the video. Another great way to support the channel is to donate some money through patreon.com or through PayPal. Details are at the very end of the video and in the description below. See you in the next video and uh, happy experiments!